In the next two videos, we're going to explore the process of importing and cleaning up a 3D scan inside 3D Coat. There are two separate workspaces or entry points into the application for us to choose from in order to perform this task. One is a high poly or voxel sculpting environment. The other is a low to medium polygon environment. We'll first cover the low to medium polygon option, which is to import it into the paint workspace. So let's choose paint UV mapped mesh from the splash screen that appears whenever you open the application. We want to click on the folder icon, which will allow us to locate the model we want to import. And then with the import dialog, if we do not have any UVs assigned, but we want some created, we can choose auto mapping, but the default option is keep UV. In this case, this model does have a UV assigned to it. I can change the UV name. It's really not that important at this point. And then your texture size. In this case, a 2K map will be fine. And just in case there are any overlapping verts, I like to choose weld vertices. It's just a matter of preference, really. Okay. Let me turn the wireframe off. I can do that from the view menu. Uncheck wireframe or use a hotkey for it. Let's inspect this model and see how much work is involved. Whoa. Yeah, it's, it's going to take quite a bit of work. Now, if your 3D scan only had maybe some minor surface bumps and maybe a few spikes, it probably would make sense to import it into this workspace and then we can step over into the tweak room and use the basic sculpt tools here as well as some basic transform editing tools. If we want to work with higher poly counts and more advanced sculpting tools, then what we're going to need to do is import a model into the sculpt workspace. The reason for this is in terms of software architecture, it's a separate environment inside 3D Coat because it's designed to handle much larger poly counts as well as voxels. In this case, because I need to use the sculpt tools in the sculpt room, I want to subdivide this model either here in 3D Coat or I can do it from the host 3D application. The reason why I want to subdivide the model before I import it into the sculpt workspace is so that 3D Coat can bake all the color information from the associated maps onto the vertices of the model as it's being imported because you have voxel mode, which is volumetric pixels, and it does not nor can it contain any UV information. Then you have surface mode, which is all polygons, but you have dynamic subdivision, which will naturally rearrange your vertex order. So again, you cannot have UVs applied to it. Nevertheless, 3D Code is gonna utilize vertex paint in order to store this color information until we are ready to apply new UVs to a new auto-retopologized mesh. Let's go into the sculpt room now and under the object section I'll choose the import tool. You could also import from the file menu as well. But once we have clicked on the import tool, here in the tool options panel we want to choose select mesh Check import without voxelization, and then hit apply. Now what I'm seeing is the model was committed to a layer here in the vox tree layer panel. And I'm also seeing that preview object as well. So to get rid of the preview object, I just need to step out into another tool. And I can switch to voxel mode, but I'm going to try to do what I can in surface mode. For one thing, it's a little bit faster than working with voxels. Another reason is because you have considerably more brushes to work with in surface mode than you do with voxels. I'm going to start off by selecting a soft polish preset. And for anyone who's new to 3D Coat, a preset is essentially a customized asset where the user can take a standard brush or tool and customize it the way they like with different brush alphas or e-panel draw modes, modified settings, and so on and name it accordingly. From this point forward, I'm going to speed up the playback in order to keep this video as brief as possible. While I'm making these sculpting edits, I'm going to change the shader to something that has a little bit more glossiness or specularity so that it makes it easier to see the surface details. 
for anyone who's new to 3D Coat, whenever you hold down the shift key, you'll see a little green profile in the center of your brush radius. That indicates your smoothing, and you can use that with any tool inside 3D Coat. I'm going to step into the paint workspace, and I'm just going to add a paint layer on top of this in order to cover the base layer, and I can always unhide it later on. Not only do I want to polish, scrape, or smooth the rough extruded areas, but also fill in all the irregular little divots that I see. I can use the fill tool for that purpose. Even though this is a great tool set and an application for this type of work, as you can see, when you have a rough model like this, it's still going to take quite a bit of time to go through and clean it up. I would estimate anywhere between 30 to 45 minutes at least. I'm just going to keep working here, but if you prefer, you can skip toward the end of this video in order to see the result. Let's use the cutoff tool to clean up these armpit areas a little bit. So we'll trim away the excess. So let's choose the polygonal lasso draw mode here.
All right, I do believe we have cleared our largest hurdle here by cleaning up a high poly mesh. In the next video, we're going to pick up right here where we're going to begin to auto retopologize this mesh, apply new UVs, and then touch up the textures, and we're done. Okay, so stay tuned, and we'll see you then.